The FTX situation has been one that has left the cryptocurrency world in a state of shock as the news of its crash wasn't one that was expected. But this unfortunate incident, a lot of individuals, and most especially small investors, lost their money in the process of purchasing FTT tokens, which were sold on the exchange, and have been in constant battle on how to get their investments back all to no avail. After a while of uncertainty, however, it was discovered that these funds didn't just vanish into thin air, but were stolen. The FTX acted as a base of operation for this heist. The perpetrators of this heist made away with billions of dollars from investors throughout their scam. But the big time question now is, where did all the money go? Michael Saylor, who is a billionaire investor and big time influencer of cryptocurrency in this era, shares his thoughts on the issue and reveals where all this money went. Welcome to Metaverse World. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as we go on. Let's hear from Saylor. million dollars to, you know, to one influencer who will remain nameless that everybody knows. And I think it'll be probably three to five years before we know the extent of that corrupt money. But I don't think that there are many people that, that weren't tainted. They went to pretty much every crypto influencer, every journalist, every politician, every entrepreneur, everybody that they, every educator, everyone that would take their money, you know, every celebrity, mm -hmm. What makes you angry is all the crypto uh, neo banks and wildcat banks that uh, collected people's money or in either got people's Bitcoin or they got their money to buy Bitcoin. And then they either never bought the Bitcoin or they bought the Bitcoin and then panic sold or, or, or sold the Bitcoin in a fire sale as they were being forced liquidated. But really makes you angry when you read about you know, say FTX that collected billions and billions of dollars, but never bought the Bitcoin actually. So if FTX stole billions of dollars in a BlockFi and Voyager and Three Arrows and, and Celsius and, and uh, Terra Luna, if all of those ecosystems basically collected people's money and then lost all the money, then people that legitimately wanted to own Bitcoin had their money stolen from them. You have the very careful Bitcoiners that bought their Bitcoin and still have their Bitcoin. And then you have uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of um, more casual Bitcoiners that maybe they bought the Bitcoin and, and deposited in Celsius to get some yield and now they lost their Bitcoin. And I think that that's tragedy. I mean, it's, it's bad for them. According to what Saylor has said, the FTX scam was a carefully thought out scheme that involved the bribery and use of major influencers, journalists, politicians, celebrities, and educators to promote the platform and FTT token and lure unsuspecting individuals looking to invest in crypto or just buy tokens. Further on, neo banking systems got involved by collecting money from people for these same investments, but in Bitcoin and sold due to panic when prices were dropping at the time. So the worth of the investments was never retrieved and the people who invested were left with nothing. Saylor points out the severity of this line and stealing, where FTX also collected billions of dollars for investments but never bought Bitcoin which was promised, leading to a lot of problems in the crypto world. This also was an extension to other ecosystems like BlockFi, Celsius, Terra Luna, and Voyager where investments from people who wanted to own Bitcoin were also lost. It's a well-known fact that the volatility which cryptocurrencies possess in their operations has led to a lot of people shying away from investing their money in the venture. This became one of the biggest problems facing cryptocurrencies, and with the FTX news being so viral and reaching a lot of people around the world, this distrust has only grown larger with these critics and naysayers having more facts in their arsenal as to why the venture isn't worth the time of day. Being $10 billion or more worth of tokens like FTT and, and SRM, and they boosted Solana, and you know, they boosted Maps, and then they went and they borrowed real money. You know, they borrowed as much as they could, posting that collateral from counterparties that, you know, like the, they borrowed from BlockFi and $15 million <laughs> to, you know, to one influencer who will remain nameless that everybody knows. And, you know, and then, and then you give it to every politician on both sides of the aisle, and then you give it to all of the academics. I, I think it'll be probably three to five years before we know the extent of that corrupt money. But I, th you know, I don't think that there are many people that, that weren't tainted. They went to pretty much every crypto influencer, 
every journalist, every politician, every entrepreneur, everybody that they, every educator, everyone that would take their money, you know, every celebrity, mm -hmm. right? So, and probably borrowed from three arrows or they borrowed from anybody that would have made um, a loan to them. And, uh, and then they borrowed from their own depositors at FTX. And of course, they then raised billions of dollars from outside investors. And they took all that money and they, and they, in essence, corrupted everybody they could, right? So you give 45 million to block, right? $45 million to, uh, uh, what, a handful of journalists? What could go wrong, you know? You know, just, just about anybody that would take their money, they went to them and, you know, if you read the FTX Ventures, spreadsheet it's like eight pages long and they invested they invested something in hundreds of things right hundreds you know it's hard to figure out who in the industry this unfortunate news throws a backstabbing feat at bitcoin as it suffers a tremendous loss when a lot of these tokens just get stolen and can't be accounted for billions of dollars of bitcoin tokens were stolen or destroyed and this left the token at risk of further manipulation in the future this was what happened with tokens which were used to commit the ftx scam tokens like ftt and terra luna plummeted in price like a use and dump scheme which isn't good for the market this line stealing and corruption that has held the crypto industry by the neck has also been seen in other instances such as the Gemini Earn product in Genesis which lost funds from investors and buyers of tokens when they loaned out these investments to Three Arrows Capital but the latter lost these funds. So this corruption is seen in various instances and the sadness of it all is that the small investors are left to pay the price by not getting their investments back which is appalling to observe. So the pumping of $7 billion by FTX as an investment on its platform for marketing and other related ventures and further borrowing the money from platforms like Three Arrows to make away with over $10 billion has to be one of the biggest crypto heists in recent times. This was only made possible through the use of these major influencers, journalists, politicians, celebrities, and educators to promote the platform and FTT token and lure unsuspecting individuals looking to invest in crypto on the platform. Regulators won't clean up the industry, right? A lot of people, a lot of people, I, I don't know, for whatever reason they think regulation is a bad word, but but if people are running through your neighborhood, you know, shooting the children and burning down the houses and stealing your cars, you know, and murdering your dog, you would say, where are the police? Why don't they show up, you know, and install some order? You know, that the real issue here is the regulators need to enforce the law. Saylor highlights that this occurrence will take a couple of years, maybe five years, before the full extent of the effects of the full details is unraveled. As a solution to make such an unfortunate situation not occur again in the future, Saylor beckons on regulators in the industry to step up their game and enforce the law to restore balance, which has been lacking in the industry. What do you think of the points given by Michael Saylor in his interview? Do you agree or have other views on this situation? Be sure to leave a comment in this section below containing your thoughts on the situation. To all newcomers on my channel, please be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get more updates on crypto related news and discussions. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.